Carpe Diem VPN. Seize the network. Hey there, this is Tim with Carpe Diem VPN, and I'm just here to show you another look at my lab. Again, I'm still rebuilding the lab, and so I'm still getting everything up and running. And in my last video, I talked about how to get OSPF external routes into the fabric and learned by other sites. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the same thing, but with BGP. So as I mentioned last time, OMP only redistributes OSPF internal routes and static routes and connected routes by default. So we actually have to edit our OMP template to do BGP. And while we're doing that, we're going to take a look at some of the other BGP options that we have and try to figure out how, which ones we should use and what the implications of those are. But real quick refresher. Again, this is our lab. Uh, we're using BGP in the data center. We're using OSPF in the branch. And between the two, of course, we're running ONP as the SD-WAN protocol. And connected to the branch, we have a T-Rex injecting a prefix. Well, the T-Rex is not injecting the prefix, sorry. In the last video, I covered this, but I'll just very quickly say it again. The T-Rex is using an emulated server subnet, which is to say that the T-Rex creates emulated clients and servers and it picks a subnet to do so. At the branch, it's this 10.10.100 for the clients. And at the data center, it's this 10.1.100 for the servers that those clients are trying to get to. Uh, the T-Rex sends traffic to the branch one switch and then through the environment and then comes back out the data center core to the emulated server and vice versa. It's a stateful transactional type of traffic. So that's how it works. But right now we don't have reachability because the branch side is not learning any prefixes for that injected uh, routes for the T-Rex servers. So that 10.1.100 is not being redistributed from BGP into OMP. And so the branch is not learning how to get to those uh, servers. So that's the piece we're going to take a look at here. Let's jump over to the command line of the devices and just verify that that's actually what's going on and that's how it looks. Here we are at the command line of the DC and branch SD-WAN routers, as well as the core switches attached to both sites. On the DC side, you can see that we're learning multiple BGP free prefixes from the site, from the DC, specifically 10.1.100 and 10.1.200. And if you jump over to the DC core side, you can actually see that we're injecting those via static route, pointing at the T-Rex, same as we were doing on the other side. You can see static routes for 10.1.100 and 10.1.200, both of them pointing at interfaces on the T-Rex. Now on the branch side, we can see that we're not learning any prefixes that are BGP prefixes from the data center. The reason for that is, of course, that we're not redistributing BGP into OMP currently. So it's not making it across the fabric or even onto the fabric to be learned. So we're going to take a look at the OMP template again, and we're actually going to split it out this time. I know last time I mentioned that, you know, we try to have the same OMP template for the fabric, but there are use cases where we would want to break it out. Like, for example, here, in this case, we're running BGP on one side and OSPF on the other, and we don't want to necessarily turn on the redistribution for both in case we were to ever deploy another routing protocol, say, at the data center. If we ever turn on OSPF at the data center for some reason, it might have unforeseen consequences. So there are use cases where we would want to break out our OMP templates into different use cases and then just apply them to the, the device templates that uh, govern that site or that use case. So let's jump over to vManage and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, here we are in vManage and you can see just like last time we have four device templates, uh, one for branch one, one for branch two, and then two different ones for the DCs. So let's jump over to feature templates. In feature templates, I broke out the OMP templates to an OSPF based template for the branches and a BGP based template for the data center where we're using Oh, uh, BGP. And in this case, the only real change we're making to the OMP template is to turn on route redistribution for a protocol we don't normally use. So uh, for redistribution into OMP. So by default, of course, like I said, we do OSPF internal connected and static routes from the SD-WAN router. 
We're going to turn on BGP as well so that BGP routes will be redistributed in OMP and be learned across the fabric. That's really the only change we're going to make in this particular uh, feature template. So let's go in here and just take a look. Actually, I've already made this change. Let me just go in and show you what I've done here. So we'll come back to the this piece here in a second, the overlay AS number. But just to show you, we took off OSPF external redistribution and we turned on BGP redistribution. So we're going to apply this on the data center side because that's where BGP is running to make sure that any BGP routes learned by the SD-WAN router end up advertised into the fabric. Now, whenever I turn on an OMP template using BGP, I usually go ahead and activate the overlay AS number, even if I'm not using BGP everywhere. And what the overlay AS number does for us is it assigns a, a BGP AS number to the fabric itself. So if you uh, some, sometimes when you have a, an MPLS carrier doing MPLS layer 3 VPN and you're advertising routes to them and then they are you know, advertising those routes to another branch where you have an MPLS circuit, uh, you'll see that the carrier adds its own AS in, AS in the AS path or, even, or sometimes they'll overwrite your AS or something like that. It depends on the different carriers. But the important thing is that here we're adding an extra AS path, a different AS path for the fabric itself. So it's kind of pretending to be a carrier. And what this does is helps with loop prevention on the BGP side. So it, it places the, a, the overlay, the, the fabric, into the AS path so that it won't be re-injected. You know, with, with BGP, that's our AS path is our loop prevention mechanism. And so by adding an overlay AS path, we can verify or we can make sure that anything we learn over the fabric doesn't get sent back into the fabric uh, ostensibly unless we redistribute to a protocol that doesn't carry AS path like you know any any other protocol but as long as it's BGP the AS path is preserved and we won't redistribute that or, or rather we won't send it back in OMP we won't even accept the BGP route actually so that's the setting and let's go ahead and add this to our data center routers SD-WAN routers and then we sh can check the uh, check the routing tables of these routers and switches again and see if that fixed our problem. So we'll just jump over to a device here. We're going to edit the device template. And because it's the DC, we're going to edit them one at a time because we have two device templates. Uh, this actually is not going to be a problem. I know I mentioned before we try to we don't want generally fabric decisions to be made differently between different devices on the fabric. But this particular change that we're making really actually only changes service side behavior where we're going to accept routes from the service side and then send it in OMP. So uh, always, of course, pay attention to the design that you're using and what the implications are of changing device templates and changing route redistribution. In this case, because we have two device templates, we're going to change it. We have to change it, you know, both uh, one after the other which isn't going to cause a problem is just be until we add the new OMP template to the second router, only one router will be advertising those BGP routes into OMP. So let's go ahead and change this to our OMP BGP template. And we're going to go ahead and update this. And that's the only piece of config that we're going to update on that device. And we can actually see that here. We have the opportunity to change other device settings and variables. Uh, we don't have any to change. We're just turning on that feature. So let's take a look at the config and see what we're adding. Let's take a look at the config diff and see what's different. All right. You can see under OMP, we, we're now created an overlay AS. We've removed advertise OSPF external. We've turned on advertise BGP. So those are the big changes that this template is going to push. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and push this template, change the config on the device. And then we'll need to do it to the second DC SD-WAN router. And then we can go back to the CLI level and see if our routes are being learned. Okay, that was successful. We'll go back to our templates and we'll make the same change to our second router at the DC. Okay, looks like it's done. We will now zip back over to the CLI and just see 
if our routing has changed and we got our routes learned across the fabric. All right, and we're back over here. Uh, we can take a look at DCA1, SDN1. Nothing's really changed here. It's still receiving the BGP routes from the DC core. DC core hasn't changed either. The big changes over here on branch one SDN1, you can see that there's new OMP routes. Specifically, there's OMP routes for the 10.1.100 and 10.1.200 emulated server routes. Now notice this, we're receiving two equal cost paths. And this, given those system IPs, the, we're receiving two equal cost paths for that prefix, one from SD-WAN 1 at the data center and one from SD-WAN 2 at the data center. Jumping over to the branch core, you can see that that's being redistributed into OSPF. And again, we're learning 10.1.100.0 and 10.1.200.0 uh, via the branch one SD-WAN router. So we now have all of the uh, routes being advertised both ways. The data center is learning the routes, uh, the emulated client route from the branch. And the branch is now learning the emulated client or server subnets from the data center. So now we should be able to start sending traffic and playing with application where routing, which we'll do in another, another video. So hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.